Okay, today we'll be talking about work. Now when I say work, I don't mean work as in going to work or working on your homework. Uh, the work we're gonna be discussing today is mechanical work. In science, work is defined as the transfer of energy from one form or object to another. So anytime an object heats up, a chemical reaction occurs, or even just giving a block a push, energy is transferred. So work is done. Now this sounds out well and good, but you may be wondering to yourself, if work is the transfer of energy, then shouldn't a competent person be first defining energy? And the answer is yes. Someone else on the internet would probably flash a cute definition of energy up on the screen right about now. But the issue is, energy is an incredibly intangible thing. It isn't made out of anything. There are no energy particles, like this one. So the only way we can really define energy is to say it is the result of work or mechanical work. To create a more tangible analogy for this issue, let's take a look at, well, the, the concept of love. Yeah, this is happening. I'm talking about feelings and emotions. Ugh. You can't see love, but you can see the effects of love. When two people love each other, you can see how they behave. The kissing and the, the communicating and all that business. Ugh. You don't see the love directly, but you see the transfer of that emotion. Ugh, I hate this example. The same thing applies to energy, though. We know objects have energy, not because we can observe energy directly, but because we can observe energy being transferred, or work being done, either on or by them. Take the example of a hot stovetop. It has lots of thermal energy, but you have no idea if it is hot until you actually touch it and the energy is transferred to your now hot hand. The fact is, think back to every science class that you ever took. Did anyone ever tell you what energy actually is or what it's made of? The answer is no. At first, this may sound strange, and if you need to pause the video to run a mental playback of your high school science, only to realize nobody ever actually told you what energy was, that's okay. All right, here we have a sugar molecule. Now there is not a high school chemistry teacher on earth who's not talked about the energy released when a sugar molecule is broken down into glucose, fructose. When they talk about the energy released in this reaction, really what they were talking about was work. That is the energy released or transferred in that reaction from this sugar molecule to say my kid on Halloween. Just bonkers. So if energy is nothing other than the result of work, then we better get back to working on understanding work. <laughs> get it? <laughs> All right. Mathematically, work is defined as F dot D, where F is force and D is displacement. Now this little dot right here, this is not a multiplication symbol. A dot product is a mathematical operation based on matrices and linear algebra. And while some of you nerds out there may be saying, yay, matrices and linear algebra, myself included, sadly, we're not going there today. Luckily for high school physicists everywhere, the formula F dot D reduces down to F D cosine theta. F is force, D is displacement, and theta is the angle to, between them. In looking at this mathematical definition of work, and going back to our original definition of work, you can see energy is transferred anytime a force acts over some displacement. And yes, that even applies way back here in high school chemistry. Now maybe you didn't talk about forces or displacements when discussing energy in high school chemistry or even biology, the gooey one. But guess what? 
forces and displacements and even physics were just behind the scenes doing work, get it, the entire time. So rather than going back and looking at something like chemistry and the sugar molecule again to understand our equation for work, let's take a look at a simpler situation. Me mowing my lawn. If the lawnmower is pushed with some force F at an angle theta relative to horizontal, a total displacement horizontally that is D, then there's energy transferred from me to the mower. Unfortunately, friction is also doing work on that mower. So while yes, there is work by me pushing on the mower, Friction is also going to do work. See, friction is in the opposite direction of displacement of the mower. So it's constantly doing negative work on the lawnmower, taking energy away. Now, how do we know friction is doing negative work on the mower, you ask? Well, going back to this equation, friction is acting backwards in the opposite direction of displacement. So there is 180 degrees between the displacement vector and the friction vector. Well, the cosine of 180 is negative 1. So the work by friction will be negative. Ultimately, if I push my lawnmower, I'm giving it energy or doing positive work on it. And friction is taking that energy away. Now, if you're feeling a bit mathy, there's another way to look at work. We can define work, just for funsies, as the infinite sum of a force as a function of position with respect to position. Now, obviously this is dependent on a bit of calculus, which we don't need to quite worry about today. We'll save that discussion for another day. So here we've got it. Mechanical work is defined as FD cosine theta, or if you want to nerd it up, the integral of F of X DX. We've gone through and we've managed to talk about how work relates to energy. We've even pulled in a little bit of, God forbid, feelings and emotions, and just as bad chemistry into this to arrive at an understanding of work and energy. So on that note, that's all for now.